And so the other thing that's very, very important to understand, and this will get us into the segue of talking about mitochondria, there are nutrients found in spirulina in particular that aren't found in any other food in the world. One of them is the blue pigment, which is called phycocyanin. Mm -hmm. And the other one, there's a number of antioxidants, but there's one called superoxidismutase, which is critical to protecting your mitochondria. So there's another really amazing nutrient that's found in spirulina that is the most important, I think, in terms of protecting your health and from declining with chronic illness or advanced aging. And what it does is it's this uh, antioxidant called, it's got a, it's a long one, <laughs> superoxide dismutase, also known as SOD. We'll just refer to it as SOD because that's easier to say. And so the reason why it's so important is that it's one of the few antioxidants that can get into the inner membrane of the mitochondria to protect it from free radical damage. I'm gonna give you a little science lesson here. Here's the cell. And in the cell, you have your nucleus and these little peanut shaped things are your mitochondria. Now remember, there's 2 million of these per cell in your brain. Now inside the mitochondria, this is where the ATP is produced. But what you no, no doubt wouldn't know, a byproduct of ATP are free radicals. Mm -hmm. And your mitochondria have their own DNA. You wouldn't know this either. There's only 37 of them compared to 22,000 regular DNA. So your mitochondria DNA are exactly where the free radicals are being produced as a byproduct of, AT, of the ATP. So your mitochondria DNA, which by the way, control everything in your body. They control the other DNA. They control cellular communication. But because they're constantly being bombarded by free radicals, their lifespan is an average of about 10 days. Your regular DNA lasts a lifetime. And so as they get fried by these free radicals, they either mutate or die. And the good news is, when you're born, your body makes this SOD naturally, just like it makes melatonin and makes glutathione. But the downside is by the time you hit 30, like a lot of things like melatonin, your body slows down it, making it. And by the time you're 40 or 50, you have virtually zero superoxide dismutase any longer because uh, superoxide dismutase is what protects the mitochondria from all those free radicals. So imagine yourself in a rainstorm, a torrential rainstorm, you're okay if you have an umbrella to protect you from the rain, right? So up until the age of 30, think of this superoxide dismutase as like a big umbrella that's protecting your free radicals or your mitochondria from all these free radicals. And then suddenly at the age of 40, somebody rips your umbrella away. Now you're exposed. There is nothing that you can do to protect your mitochondria because they have an inner membrane that most antioxidants cannot get inside. All your cells have a simple a lipid membrane around it and mitochondria do as well, but they also have this inner membrane and most antioxidants, vitamin C, vitamin E, drugs, nothing can get in there, but superoxidismutase can. And so can glutathione and so can chlorophyll. And guess what? Algae has the three highest concentration of those three nutrients. So now your mitochondria can be protected from free radical damage. So that when, and so now they can be restored. Now they can grow back. Now they can have more lights on <laughs> in your building. And so now you're generating more ATP. Now you have cell more cellular energy to fight those viruses, to think faster, to have better digestion. Everything works better when you have more ATP, more cellular energy. It is the key to life. It is, it is really the life force. And so I tell people, you know, I never eat alone. I always eat with my mitochondria. And <laughs> The problem, and this, uh, Dr. Tina, you'll appreciate this, the thing that creates the most free radicals in your in the mitochondria are processed carbs. Yeah. Processed carbs. They're killing you. <laughs> if you don't have to go full keto, just cut them out as much as you can because a, either a keto diet or a carnivore diet, anything that's, re we're talking processed carbs. So that's, you know, breads and pizzas and muffins and sugar and glucose-laced uh, drinks, get rid of them. That alone will give you extra years and help stop that rainstorm of free radicals. And algae or intermittent fasting 
are the best for reducing your number of free radicals. There's virtually no free radicals that are generated from intermittent fasting or from algae. It's very, very efficient. And it also stimulates autophagy and apoptosis, which is the healthy cell death, which you want. So it's like having the cleanup crew, getting rid of all the garbage in there. Yeah, so getting rid of the zombie cells. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's pretty amazing. But I want to tell you why the mitochondria have that inner membrane that is impervious to virtually other antioxidants or even drugs. And it's and you're going to find this fascinating. So remember I mentioned at the very beginning that algae was the first life on Earth about 4 billion years ago. And it was oh. a cyano, cyanobacteria. It was a single cell organism, anaerobic cell. Because before algae... Earth was just gas and water, no oxygen, no life. Nobody really knows what that this first little cell started growing, but it did. And it was a cyanobacteria like spirulina. Remember I said spirulina is a cyanobacteria. Now it generated energy because it generated ATP and so it releases oxygen on Earth. So a billion years later, now there's oxygen on Earth. Oh, now aerobic cells could grow and they were bigger, but turns out they didn't generate as much ATP as the anaerobic cell. So I can imagine the conversation between the two, the big cell and the little cell. The big cell says to the little cell, hey guy, I see you're struggling there. How about we join forces? You come and generate ATP for us and we'll protect you from the oxygen because you're an anaerobic cell. That's basically what happened. So the anaerobic yeah. cell got absorbed by the aerobic cell, but they didn't digest it, it coexisted. And that original cyanobacteria became your mitochondria. And yep. that is why there's an inner membrane because that first membrane never disappeared. It just got covered by a lipid membrane. And so it makes complete sense to me why everything in algae is completely helpful and can penetrate the mitochondria because they're basically family. <laughs> 